So we're gonna dig the Australia here. Yeah, that's a good point actually. And no, that's good, that's good. I didn't even say that. I do even actually film it then. So when we talk about depth of dig, people always say, what should you have for a pedestrian area or patio? And generally the general consensus is, and even if you don't believe it is, but the general consensus is if you look at the forums and, and standards is that it's 100 mil sub base, then your bedding course, inch and a half, two inches, and then your slab, so it's about eight inches. But what you've got to remember is that in this case, is like I always say, the depth of the dig out will depend on the dig. The depth of the sub base depends on the dig. So if you look at here now, that's been quite, what has it been? Well, it's, soft. it's just soft, it's easy, yeah, isn't it? Massively soft, it's an easy dig, but you can't leave. So if you were digging a foundation for house, so generally all the houses that you see now are built on rafts, and rafts are basically a float, okay, with steel in, okay, so if it, if, if, if it moves, it all moves. Yeah, it's gotta be consolidated, but with a traditional dig, what they were doing a conventional foot in the foundation, you can go as much as like, oh, you can go really deep. I mean, years ago it was like 1.5 meters in places, and uh, in Colchester many years ago we were doing, doing a dig nearly four meters. Yeah, I've, on, a, on a conventional dig that is. Yeah, back home I've been yeah. on a few sites where they're going very deep. And then what will happen sometimes as well, like if you get to the bottom of the foundation, it's still a little bit soft. What they used to do sometimes, if there were soft pockets, because it's about getting down to the original ground level for a, f a, f a foundation. And if you had the odd soft pockets where the ground was undulated, because you had to get back down to what they call virgin ground. And if you had soft pockets, they would take that out. And before they were concrete, they would used to put lean mix in. So a lean mix would dry quite quickly. It would stabilize the ground, and then you could you could put a pour in. And then sometimes you put steel in, or sometimes they didn't put steel in. And of course, these days they've got fiber. I'm talking about this a little bit fast at the moment now, but people are gonna say, well, we're not talking about a foundation, but ask yourself this. This type of soil, I'm asking you this question now, with this type of soil, it's that soft, do you think 100 mil would be? No. No, it wouldn't be, would it? No, you need to go deeper, because e even as it is now, and I mean, we're well, we're, we're over a foot deep, aren't we there? So, um, yeah. and it's still, still very soft. It's still soft, of course. I'm not sure what this site was on here, but sometimes on these general commercial sites like this, they would have recycled products and sometimes they put it in the ground, but look how deep is it. This isn't bad soil, it needs some, you know, some grit in there, some sharp sand, some humus rich soil, some composting to liven it up, but it's, it's good ground. But nevertheless, um, this is why patios move because the, the contractor will, will say, yeah, I've got, I went down 100 mil, but to be honest, it's not good enough, is it? Not really, no. No. I put you back into it. Well, you are right, we've had a little dig around here. Now we're starting to hit stony ground, okay? Yeah. And that stony ground is, without doubt, what we call one spit, one shovel full, and that's about 12 inches below the existing level there on that side. So we're starting to hit stony ground here. And because it's a bit sort of, how can I say, it's a bit un unstable, it's, it's not like a natural dig all the way through. What we'll do, we'll probably put a membrane on here throughout as a stabiliser as well. And you always remember is, you've got the Bristol Channel just there, haven't you? Yeah. So. Well, I'm, uh, I'm on the camera now, and as you can see, you can see the depth that we've dug out on there. Uh, it did slope up on that bank, to be, grand, to be fair. We haven't dug all that out, but there's the pile, a couple of ton at least on there. But we'll probably condition some of that and maybe use it in the planter, I'm not quite sure. Um, or get rid of it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And yes, it would have been good to get it straight into the skip. The skip isn't here. We've made made use of a good day. It's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful sunny day today. And that's great for, for February, but you can see the base it's in. Our client can come back now and see that. And uh, it'll, it'll sort of put them some peace of mind knowing that there's a good sub base under there initially. And remember, we've got to do something with that. We're going to shape it up. And we can put a Leemix on top, as I've said before but we've made some sort of progress now anyway. That's the main thing. Well, here we are. Got the boards in place, nice thick boards, and we've got a real heavy tarpaulin sheet, heavy duty tarpaulin sheet. Got a couple of boards down here. We'll pick up another sheet later on and just keep this area covered. There we are.
The reason we're using those slurry mixers is simply because we want it to adhere, we want it to have some cohesiveness between each level. And it's in the same way, the reason we use SBR is because we want the SBR, the SBR stops the, uh, the bedding mortar actually sucking all the moisture out of the mortar that you're putting on. So it, it just needs to stick together. So what we're gonna do now, get this row in here now, and then we're gonna slurry this bit, mix that up, and then go again. Can you get Lee Mix ready mix? Of course you can. You can go to any uh, concrete suppliers and you can get it ordered and get it delivered on site. But we haven't got it delivered today. There's only a certain amount we can actually do today and small amounts cost more money than what we do if we had three cubic meters. So it would just cost you more money. So it's just as cost effective just to mix it by hand. It's a bit of hard work, but it keeps you fit. We'll do that one straight away. End of the day, cleaned all the patio off because you have got it dirty. Just got to leave things nice and clean and tidy. Yeah. Well, what Ryan and I were talking about earlier, um, we're building this wall around here now, and a lot of people are always going to say, well, you should have built the wall first before you, you built the deck. Um, well, I don't necessarily agree with that. This is a big old decking area. 
and has to be put in place. People ask now about whether we can where we need to protect it. The fact is, when we burn it with the Shosugi band method, it really it really hammers the surface. So what we can do with this, we can clean this off after, and of course, we can burn it again and give it another light burn again, which we will do, right? Because in places we need to touch up. But the most important thing is today is while it's not raining, we get this water. It's a funny thing building meandering walls and uh, you've just got to keep checking all the time constantly like you know is it, is it easier with a straight a straight wall <laughs> probably than this maybe definitely <laughs> some people out there are going to say it's not but there you go. Everybody's entitled to the opinion. No, why not? We were just dis discussing about um, we've got to use the this morning, and you'll be able to see it in this video. We've got to use the TC125. That's that little plunge saw, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, from ITS, and it cuts at an angle as well. Yeah, yeah. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I, you know, we've got so many tools available to us now these days to what we had in the past, and. Um, but that TC125 is a brilliant saw and it's a track saw as well, isn't it? It is, yeah, it is a track saw. What's the beauty of running things on a track saw? It's just one continuous straight line. Yeah. You know, you can't you can't mess up, you can't be a mill out here, two mils out there. It's... We're cutting through 20 mil porcelain, aren't we? Yeah. And um, what do you think, how many passes we should have? It's gonna definitely be a few passes. I know like in previous videos you've done it in one before, but then you've worked with so many different types of porcelain, some's better than others, some you know, and you can do it, but... It's not always the same practice for every porcelain, is it? No, and to be fair, I think it's better, it's it's less stress on the uh, the blade and the, the, the machine. Yeah. To do it that way, it's just better all around, a couple of passes. Some people say, well, you could just use a, an angle grinder. Yeah, well... Some people aren't that skillful enough, are they, to actually use the angle grinder? Yeah, there's that as well. You know, but even it... for me, I need, I need it. I think the thing about the track, it does keep it lined up. Nice yeah, it's and just neat. perfect in line, isn't it? Yeah. But there's no variations. There's no. There's as long as you get the measurements right in it. Well, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Leave them to me then. That shows that that should be done, isn't it? Yeah. Monday morning, and we're back at the bridge. What have you, what have you got there, Lee? A big flat. That that looks it looks well on you. <laughs> Well, I've told you about a fantastic opportunity at Glen Humphreys Landscapes in Cornwall. Go to their website, which is glenhumphreys.co.uk. You'll be able to find all the details to them on there. Give them a ring, send them an email, and don't forget, tell them Johnny Boy sent you. Got Lee today. Lee's. I think Ryan, you've had it. No, you haven't had it. <laughs> no, it's great having Lee. Lee's really fun. Not that Ryan's not fun. Um, what's the benefits of having Lee? Lee, well, because he's here. Ryan's not here. Um, got nothing bad to say against Ryan. Hey, seriously, we're um, we're putting this soil in now, aren't we? Is it good soil? 
it's, it's all right. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. But I was going to say to you, if I was to say anything about this soil company online, and I know that they see it, but they wouldn't say, hey, John, thanks very much. Here's a beer. No. Not that I want a beer, because I don't drink. I don't drink nothing at all. I'm alcohol-free. I've been alcohol-free for about 40 years. Now I'm lying. No, I haven't. <laughs> no, if they want to send me a beer, they can. But if that's what I'm saying. If I was saying anything good about this company, they wouldn't say nothing. They wouldn't say... They wouldn't, like, I go out the way to sort of make a video and say how good the soil is, but they wouldn't phone up and say thank you. They should do. Yeah, they should do. It's just respect, isn't it? It's, yeah. It should be reciprocated. Do you want anything more? <laughs> what are you doing, John? Hi, Lee. Um, well, we were just talking about how important it is to show your client the state of the manholes before you start work, isn't it? Yeah. So it's important that we make sure that we show them that because there's nothing worse. Contractors always get blamed for mortar or mud or rubbish going down the manholes when they're working around it. And with this manhole, it was quite dirty beforehand, wasn't it? Oh, it was filthy. Yeah, and um, I don't think it was cement, but there was a real build-up. And I think, looking at this, the water is holding up. It's not running. It's not running clear. And I think that there's, there's potentially, not necessarily a blockage further. And this is a foul line as well, so we're going to have to make sure we clean this pipe after. But I think there's not necessarily a blockage, but there is something actually holding up further on down. And this is the middle of the road. So this chamber here is foul, it's taking next door and it's going through to the neighbours over there. So we've got to make sure that um, this is clear, though it is not necessarily our responsibility, is it? But you've got to show willing, haven't you? Like, you know, so we may have to get our rods out and, and drain this, but um, I did explain this to our client yesterday before we took the top off and he come out and when we pulled the top off you could see that it was in a bit of a mess wasn't it so things were building up and it's if you look at the water inside there lee now you shouldn't be seeing water holding like that should you so it's clear now so, so because it's clear it is running away but it should be totally nothing in there should it so if you want to go back to my face now lee and i'll give a big smiling face because i'm going to annoy someone out there have a great day Well, there you go for those who like time lapse we did a bit of a time lapse then and yes the, it does look wonky because there's a hole there and we've gone bigger than what the width of the the path is going to be but you can actually see that's where we're going to dig and it's going to mirror the shape of that wall over there so we're going to wait for tony to come back and have a look at that and just check that with tony then we're going to start digging that out and start thinking about getting our path in but because we're going to have stepping stones the bit between the path we've got to make sure we've got plenty of soil in between haven't we lee so make sure that the cement is packed up at the side so what we don't want is grass sitting on more to do it because it's going to dry out so there we go oh my god tony look at that Cheers, tony. Oh my god. thank you <laughs> yeah these these videos aren't all about me this is our lee lee's uh, what are you doing lee Can you, yeah, we're joining up on that wall there, but on that little joint there, we're going, we're going to put some exterior filler at a later date, aren't we? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, there he is. So, Ailey. Hey, John. Not to me, the viewers. Hey, guys. There we go. And girls. <laughs> and and whatever else is out there. And doggies. Yeah, <laughs> and doggies. <laughs> so, there well, there's Rend around there. We've done that the other day when we had time. And then we've gone, gone along there as well, so done that that's what it's going to end up like apparently it's going to be painted white tony says and we've gone down there so it's not bad not bad we've just got to smooth it up now i know i haven't brought much video content lately it's lee over here just let you know who the witnesses are our tony's just gone around the corner and hiding now um but he's bought us a nice cup of brew a nice brew and lee's got one what have you got lee tea fourth fourth fifth today fifth and if you want to if you're looking for a good client, uh, Tony's the one to come and work for, like, because they look after you. Sausage sandwiches, and he's, but you've got to build a relationship and a rapport up. Um, so Tony's got something in common with me. Where Lee went for the chocolate biscuit, right? I went for the jammy dodger, like Tony. So Tony and I have definitely got something in common. Tony's already had a chocolate. Cheers.
Morning, Lee. Morning, Tom. Well, what we've got here, this is um, our coping stones. We've cut these all to the exact shape of the wall going round. And as I said, that's that wall is a sweep. It's not necessarily a radius. It's a sweep. It's a nice, gentle sweep, a meandering sweep in the garden, wrapping around the back end of the decking. And what we've actually done, we've got exactly the same parallel joint all the way through. We've cut through it again. We spent a lot of time on this. It's very bespoke, but what we've got to do now is, what we don't want is the water running down the face of the render. So what we're going to do, we're going to put a small capillary groove on the underside of here, okay? And we've got to do all those coping stones right the way through. I don't know how many there is. And obviously we have to do the coping stones for real. We've got these cut, yeah. but we'll be, we'll be doing these today. And as soon as we, we complete the task of cutting the capillary groove out, we'll show you in a sec uh, what we're gonna do. We're gonna start bedding them on with a bit of luck. The weather doesn't look absolutely fantastic today, but we will be doing it. Well, I just wanna show you the deck, look at this. Just give it a bit of a clean off now because we've been working around here and uh, little bits of cement will come off, that's not a problem. But look how that colour works perfectly with that Dixonia, that tree fern. Look at it, absolutely fantastic contrast in colour. And what Tony's got here, he's got some ferns, some hookahs, some osters going on there. And uh, there's some new ones over there coming through. You can just about see them making room. Just there, but they look really good. Well, look at this. Tony's painted the wall. Let's go back a little bit. There he is in there. Say good morning, Tony. Morning. Yeah, people are enjoying you now. I'm getting comments and <laughs> remarks, and that they want to come and work here because the tea and the coffee and uh, the Donald Russell <laughs> burger. Well, obviously, John, after you finish, there's no work left. <laughs> We'll just ignore him there. Um, there we are, barbecue, looking nice. Good color match, he's got the wall painted as well, which is good. Deck's all cleaned over there, looking good. Lovely shape. Doesn't that look different now, Lee, with the wall painted? Doesn't it? Totally different, totally different. And uh, so we're gonna break that out, we're gonna get some of that out. I think Lee, Lee will organize me now. We've got uh, two, four bags of soil coming. Get that out and then look at the decking. Yeah, Looking good. Uh, yeah. Well, I would leave this morning. It's a bright sunny day, and I keep saying it's cold. Lee keeps saying it's not, and he keeps saying I'm whinging. But uh, Lee, uh, seriously, just want to say a big thanks uh, for all the help that you've been giving me, and um, we're going to make it up to you soon, son. I'm mm -hmm. hugging him now, good him. Listen, what we also got to do on this video, keep your arm on me. Also, what we got to do on this video is we got to tell our viewers at the end of the video what the next project is because this has nearly come to an end if tony lets us go i know he wants us to keep us here doesn't he a little bit squeeze that shoulder so here we are we're just <laughs> look what i just done we can get that off but we're just going over here with, with the grout with the joints and we're just cleaning off as we're going along now and uh it's coming along and it so oh, yeah. just fill those little bits up Hey, God gave us those fingers, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally absolutely. Well, Tony, uh, um, Mr. Mr. Jones, rather, the lawn's been laid, isn't it? And uh, is it being laid successfully when it comes to quantities? Is it on? Calculated? Don't wet me. <laughs> no! No, we got there, didn't we? Yeah, Come just. <laughs> yeah but listen, when, when Linford Christie crossed the lines in the Olympics that time and he got his gold medal, nobody said, oh, he just done it. He won, didn't he? Small margins and all that young tone, small margins. <laughs>
do like a four second clip. Yeah. <laughs>